You're listening to Let's Talk Sports with Tim McCain, and I am here with Jeff, the infamous Copeland. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing today, brother? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Good, bro. good. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. So you're here with the, your two beautiful daughters. What, what are their names? What's your name? I'm Jenny. What's your name? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you had an incident that happened recently, that happened today, actually, when you yeah. were driving. What happened today? Uh, I was on my way to Charlotte. Um, I was on my way to get them, and I um, almost got into a crazy accident. My car hydroplaned on the highway. Uh, did a 360 and hit the embankment on the left. Jeez. But um, I thought the car was going to flip because it was it was that loose on the road. But, you know, it, it, it caught the embankment, and, it, you know, it kind of, like, uh, like, got itself back down the hill and it stopped right before it got back into traffic. So, you know, it, it, it was a crazy experience but you know it had me shook a little bit but um but everything is good as long as i got to them and they here safe so. yes god is good god is good yes sir yes sir so when did your love for the fight game begin brother oh, if you could take us man. back to the beginning uh, it was before these little types were born uh uh man oh my god i had to been like six or seven wow I was born and raised in new york in queens uh born in queens general hospital and uh Living in uh, living in Queens, uh, my stepdad and my mom they put me in karate early, mm. and uh, I stayed in that for probably about two years, and then uh, when I really got a passion for it was when I like I turned eighteen and I started training with my brother, and uh, we did make, we, we trained mixed martial arts. So then, uh, as far as a career, I didn't want to do it as a career until she was born. Mm. And I was like twenty five then, and. Uh, my first fight was like two years ago. Wow. December 2018. Mm. So, and then uh, my last fight was uh, January 2020. 2020. Yes, and, sir. Uh, you know, that's, it's just like the, the especially boxing. Like I, like recently, because when I first started martial arts, the boxing aspect of it, I didn't really pay attention that much. Mm. But like when I started studying, like I started uh, like watching Tyson and, and Floyd and and uh, Pacquiao and Lomachenko and, and all these great fighters, man. And like I started loving the science of it. Mm. And a lot of people like they they know how to throw punches, but they don't know why they're throwing punches. Mm. You know, so there's a there's a reason why they call it sweet science. Mm. You know, and if if you don't study, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. So, so what's the difference of why someone throw pun throws punches compared to somebody just throwing punches? Well, there's, there's two reasons. Because, you know, when people are in a combative uh, situation, it's fight or flight mode, right? Absolutely. So, <clears throat> either it's for defense or offense. So if you're a fighter, you know, offensively, you know, you're trying to get, like you'll throw a jab to get to a point, whether it be a hook or uppercut or an overhand. But, you know, normal people are just throwing it just to throw it. They don't really know the reason why. They're just trying to get that person off of them, for mm. the most part. That's for defensive purpose. That's amazing. That's amazing. What has this experience been like for you, taking the fight game seriously as someone who's seeking to, to this fight game as a profession? Oh, man. Oh, man. That's a good question. Uh, this experience has been amazing, man. Like, it's, it's definitely an outlet. Uh, like emotionally, you know, mentally, mm. it's definitely an antidepressant, you know, because uh, like my mom passed uh, last year, uh, October uh, 24, and uh, the next day I was in the gym. Mm. You know what I mean, because like I just I needed to hit something, right? <laughs> so I needed I needed that, and if I didn't have it, then ain't no telling what would have happened. Mm. You know, so. It's definitely helping me, you know, grow as a person and as far as discipline and, and, and just all around game. Like as far as like boxing, like I, I fell in love with boxing more so than martial arts. Not only because they get paid more, but, <laughs> but, but because it's like even though there's more aspects to martial arts, like boxing is just, it's just something about it. Like it's right. Just, it's just like it, it's, it draws you in almost, and and like because then when you when you're a fighter, you start noticing different things. 
Mm. Like, ooh, he probably shouldn't have did that, or he should have went this way, he should have went that way. You got casual people that say that stuff, but they've never been hit in the face before. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, I hope I answered your question. I feel like I yeah. kind of went off a little bit. No, no, it oh, was cool. it was really just about your experiences and and the fact of the matter is is that you've grown in your understanding of the fight game and so now you get to see things at a level that an average fan or an average person would would see you know what i mean because you have experienced the fight game you know what it takes you've been in the trenches what is it like um being in the trenches and how does that translate into life oh man uh i feel like fighting is almost a, a, a acronym for life mm. uh, because, you know, Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody has a game plan until they get punched in the mouth. Absolutely. When you think about life, you got a plan until your plan is derailed. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it's basically teaching you to stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. Why they said it's going to be easy? It's not supposed to be easy. Because mm. if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's facts. You know, so, just stick to the plan. Trust the process. Yes, and sir. Learn how, how learn how to love Philly. Yes, sir. Learn how to love Philly. Yes, because sir. a lot of people they get they get they get comfortable with that win. And then when they lose, they they go crazy. They don't know how to come back from it. Man, you touched on something huge because you know when we when we for you, I know you're someone who's a black advocate. Facts. Strong. Facts. Like do you feel like as a people sometimes we can fear failure when it comes to taking those risks from a business standpoint. Like a lot of times, like we'll be someone, we'll work for somebody, but we might not step out. I right. see for you, you're somebody who not only is talking the talk, but you, you're right. walking the walk. You're an owner of Hands Up Combat Fitness. Like, what is it like being an owner, but also to, not only talking the talk, but walking the walk? Well, to create, creating this business because it was, it was one of my passions. Uh, I feel like it was just an urgency in me, like especially after my mother passed, like it was just like I'm going to do it or not, you know. Mm. And I and to the people that are thinking about, you know, uh, stepping out of that job and and you know branching off into to being who they feel like they can be, it just takes a decision. That's all it does. It takes the same decision you made to get up and go to that job is the same decision and the motivation you take to to free yourself from, because like. I told my, I told my, I told my, my wife that last year that I never want to go back to work for anybody else mm. because there's power in ownership. Mm. And as our people, absolutely, we don't really own a lot of things. Like we own less now in 2021 yeah. than we did a hundred years ago. And that's crazy. Given yeah. all the advancements we made, all the social advancements, all the economical advancements. We generate about a trillion dollars in the market. Absolutely. But we don't use the buying power that we have. Mm -hmm. Last year, no, actually this year, I don't know if you've been on my Facebook, and I, I, I advocated to uh, uh, February Black Owned, mm. right? So basically, all of February, buy Black Owned. Yes, as sir. As black people are concerned, buy Black Owned. Because... Mm. That'll shut the system down. And then we'll have buying power as far as economically and politically. Absolutely. Because how did the Asians get, you know, uh, the anti-hate bill and we've been here dealing with the same stuff? You know what I mean? And it's like, because they have buying power. Mm. They have economic buying power. Absolutely. But, you see, y'all getting a little restless? Yeah, yeah. Y'all ready? How... how Hey, I have a question for you. What do you guys think of your father's fight career? Have you guys seen your father fight? No, I've never seen him fight. Have you seen the tape, though? Have you ever seen the tape? Um, I never saw my dad fight, but I think he's a good fighter. <laughs> Amen to that. What do you think? What do you think? Ah! <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch your sister. Go So what is your favorite battle so far um from 2018 to 2020 what's been your favorite battle my last one mm. my last MMA fight because it was a good fight I'm not I'm not one to make excuses uh but there was an issue before well actually that whole week and again I'm not making no excuses I take that L proudly you know what I mean and shout out to the uh, dude I fought uh 
name escapes me right now. But shout out to him. Uh, but um, yeah, the if if I could change anything in that fight, I would change my the way I approach it. Cause I was ready. Mm. Uh, if you look at the first round, I don't even know if they got the tape out, but the first round I won. The only reason why he won the second round was simply because the last few seconds he got the takedown. I got a knockdown in the second round off of uh, a hook, a lead hook, and I'm a softball. So um, wow. Um, but then the third round, like I was gassed out, dehydrated, mm. and I couldn't even like I couldn't move. So like I basically. I basically gave him that. You know, in the third round, he got the rear naked choke. And shout out again, shout out to him. He put in the work, you know. Um, but he got the rear naked choke. And he won the fight. Yes, but I would sir. say that would be my favorite because I saw my growth. Mm. Because in the first round, I almost got him in a submission, and then he tried to get me in the submission, but I reversed it. And the way I reversed it, it was I could tell I was in flow state, mm. like to where I was doing things that just it made sense. You know, so, but yeah, I would say that was my, my, my favorite fight. Yes, sir. How did Queens, New York shape you as a man and as a fighter? <laughs> man, I would say New York in general, man, because even though, like, even though I'm from Queens, like, my mother, you know, she's from Brooklyn, bed you know, Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've got family in Manhattan. Uh, so, New York has basically shaped me for my grip. Yeah, Hold on, baby. I'm busy. Um, for my grit and my determination. Mm. And uh, just like, just, you know, say no attitude, you know. So I would say it, it shaped me in that way. Wow. Um, I'm doing because they fall apart. <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. No, you good. You good, um, brother. <laughs> So that that's how New York shapes you. Yeah, okay. man, yeah, man. And, yes, sir. Um, oh, you talking about? No, I'm gonna take the toilet paper and put it back there that I got for the yes, I'm not gonna bother you all. No problem. Man. Have a good day. Yes, sir. Yes, Could sir. Can you close that door a little bit? Yeah. Well, not the for that. No, not all the way. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But um, yeah um, and as far as like just just determination and pushing forward, um, but then most one of the main things that shaped me was uh, especially recently was uh. My mother, I sit back and I think, uh, you know, everything she went through in her life and how, even though, you know, she was in pain and, you know, and, like, she couldn't do it, she still did it anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? It didn't matter how much pain she was in. Yeah. It didn't matter how sick she was. You know, she did it anyway. Yeah. There's something about the strength of, of mothers, black mothers, oh, you know, who who've been a staple in the black community right. from from all aspects of life. Right. Can you just speak on on what your mother represents oh, um, when it comes to the black community, when it comes to w women in general, when it comes to people in general, what well, she represents? Of course, the mother is the nurturer. Mm. Um, the mother is the nurturer. You know, she, she nurtures your dreams. So... You know, when your dad, he plants the dream. Your mother nurtures it so he can grow. You know, so, and, and, like, my mom, I'm still feeling. So, my mom, to me anyway, like, she was just strong and determined. Like, okay, so my mother was born uh, March, March the 8th, 1967. Mm. In, in, I believe in Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> and uh, she was born with uh, sickle cell anemia. And she dealt with that her whole life. Uh, I don't know what age she was when she when her hip, like her left hip started deteriorating. And she dealt with that for my whole life. I'm, I'm, I'll be 33 in December. Um, and the last year of her life, she had finally gotten hip surgery. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but the last few months of her life, like she, a whole bunch of ailments happened. And I know I'm kind of going off off subject, but uh, but as far as the the value of a mother, especially in the black community, is very needed. But one thing I will say is that the one thing that is more needed, because we know the black mother is prominent. Like, the black mother ain't going nowhere. 
but the structure of our community is damaged. Mm. Especially from the 60s all the way to now. Absolutely. You know, you got, of course, in, in our community, you know, there's absent, absent father, and you got most of these children being raised by our women. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But there has to be a balance. Because you don't see this in the animal community. You know, and there, there, there can be pointed a blame, you know, for certain aspects of it. But for the groundwork, we got to take that. Absolutely. As men. As men, we got to take that. You know, mm. so we got to take that, you know, because, uh, you know, as far as black men are concerned, of course, you know, during the 60s, 70s, 80s, crack epidemic, sent a lot of us to jail, you know, and women were forced to live in their masculine state. Absolutely. Now, and, 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 you know, and we still see the effects. Still see, still, and it's probably not going to end for another hundred years, man. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Because I got, I got faith in this new generation to a degree. That's good. Because um, I see the work. I see them learning. You know. And, that's good. And that's that's really, you know, to, to heal what we have to do. Because we were fine during segregation. <laughs> like, as far as our people are concerned, I'm, I'm going I mean, to I'm going. I mean, I'm going. I'm going. I mean, you make a good point. Like, we were fine during segregation. We, we built things. We owned things. The... The black family structure was solid. Yeah. But then, you know, trying to get assimilated into into the dominant culture, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things fell. Like for some reason, we got the notion that you know, white ice is colder. Yep. And we just fell into that, and we haven't been able to dig our way out since. And plus, as far as economically, we haven't been able to keep our money in our community. Everybody does except for us. But if we took the trillion dollars we spent, we crying reparations. Not every black person needs reparations. Because I see what y'all do. I see, listen. <laughs> I see what you niggas do. Y'all your taxes. And, and, <laughs> y'all messed the bag up, man. Like, but, if we think critically about the money that we spend, in 50 years, we can get ourselves out of this situation. Absolutely. With, Absolutely. With, Groundwork, family economics, group economics. You know, and Claude Anderson. Exactly. Exactly. Claude Anderson. Exactly. But people don't 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 really want to. They don't want to do the work. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, I gotta you know stop buying this and that and because of the convenience. Right. Like I remember when they did the bus boycott. They they walked to work. That's right. And charge you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in church, church shoes. shoes. Okay. In church All right. shoes. I thought, okay. But we out here buying J's lines around the block for J's. That money was right into the prison industrial system. Mm. I'm a, man, listen, I'm going to stop. No, it's keep this. going. Like, keep going. Like, keep on, going. Man, like, then we made, if they made them shoes in America, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But the quality that's made in America isn't top notch. So it's like, what you going to do? That's why everything is outsourced. Mm. But. You know, it, 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 I forgot the goddamn question. <laughs> no, no, this is this is more important. This is this is this is the truth. The yeah. truth of the matter is, is that we need to. We can be. We can work with other communities, but to work with other communities, we need to work within ourselves. Right. That's the you know. way we build. We Absolutely. can't build from the outside in. We gotta build from the inside out. You Absolutely. Know, and and I feel like, and I know you know, this business that I started. Right? help them, you know, the, the greater good, but I feel like every man, woman, child need to know how to defend themselves. Every man, woman, child need to know how to defend themselves. You know, and, 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 and me being a man of my family, everybody after me needs to know. They have to know how to defend themselves. I, I'm, not, I'm not taking nothing less than that. You know, so, um, and not just, you know, combatively, Weapons training as well. Mm. Soon enough, I need to, me and my lady, we're going to get our, um, our, uh... The right to, so we have, so we need to have the right oh, yes, to bear yes, arms. That's a right. We need to exercise that right. We need to exercise that right. Because the issue is, the issue is, um, like, when the Black Panthers was exercising that right, mm. nobody fucked with us. After 
after you know Bobby Seale and 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 and, and uh, Huey B. Newton, mm -hmm. and Fred Hampton got got, everybody got scared, and they stopped exercising their their rights. Mo most people don't even know their rights. I'm not gonna say I know all my rights, right? But I know it enough. Absolutely. You know, basics, just basics. Listen, basics will get you out of a lot of shit. And the same thing, the basics with life is the same thing with fighting. Mm. Most fights are won with basic shit. So if you had to talk to, uh, and I'm going to continue on with the, yes, the, the, the blackness of the conversation because oh, yeah. I think oh, yeah, it's important. To. So if you had to talk, for me personally, I believe it's got to be from a local. We have to build these things locally Basics. and then, Basics. exactly. So if you were going to talk to a young person who wanted to, or even yourself, start something to, in, to help improve your local community, how would you advise the people to do it? That's a good question. Um, group economics. That's, that's really because you got to get people invested. Because really, the money don't matter. It's the people that matter. Because if you got people, you got money. You know, if you got people that are riding with you, you can always fund what you need to fund. Mm. But if the people aren't there, just like politics, if the people, if you ain't got the people, you ain't got the resources. So it all comes back to group economics, group communism. Like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the other communist shit, like <laughs> Russia. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you talking to your neighbor and within a four block radius. And y'all getting together, putting your resources together. It's called group economics or group or, or local communism. Like it works. And all y'all put your resources together and y'all all eat off of that. And y'all can build to however high you wanted to go, but it all works. Like we did it back in the 20s and, and you know in the, tw in the 20s and the 30s and you know before the crack epidemic during you know segregation we did that we mm. had no choice but now we have to get back to the mind of not having a choice because you got all these companies that don't really don't give a fuck about us they just care about our money mm. you know and it, it it it's not transitioning over there is no such thing as trickle down economics because it's never been it's never worked. Mm. The top 1% are eating good right now. Jeff Bezos and freaking uh, 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 Warren Buffett. Warren mm. Buffett. The niggas ain't paying taxes. <laughs> they ain't paying no type of taxes. $40 million in taxes last year. Uh, fucking uh, Jeff Bezos didn't pay. Mm. But they gonna come after you. Because they eat off the bottom. They not worried about the top. They eating off the bottom. When the pandemic happened, who they tell to go to work? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the what you're saying is key. We we need to have uh, our black leaders, especially people who make that amount of money. They right. need to give back to the community. They need to invest in the black they community. The community. So it's like, why wouldn't you divest back into or invest back into the community? Because that's what gave you your platform. Because without the people, like I said, you got nothing. You got nothing. And Martin knew that, and and, and so did Malcolm. Yes, you know sir. I mean? And what would have been like if they could have worked together in oh, some man, kind think, of way? I think that's why they got killed, honestly. Mm. Because if they would have worked, bro, if they would have worked together, man, nothing, every shit would have changed. Because before Malcolm died, he was organizing, he was organizing uh, to uh, sue America on the world stage. Mm. You know, to, to sue them against uh, for crimes against humanity. You know what I mean? So they had to kill him because they didn't want to get sued by uh NOI? Yeah, NOI. No, not 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 NOI. Uh they didn't want to get sued by um because he was I, I, He left he left he NOI. Left NOI by the time before he died. Mm. But uh he was gonna take America up on charges for crimes against humanity. Mm. For what they were doing to black people. Or the Negroes back then, you know. Mount, uh, Martin was organizing the Poor People's Movement. And he was going to have people sit in Washington, D.C. until the laws changed. And they didn't want him organizing that. So they killed him. And, I mean, matter of fact, he didn't even die when he got shot. He died in the hospital. The doctor killed him. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, us as people, man, it, it, it behooves us to come together and work as a united front because everybody else doesn't. Mm. So what are we doing? Now don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna say that the effects of the William the William Lynch letter doesn't exist because it does. 
because when he wrote it, he said, you know, it would have effects for a thousand years. Mm. But the problem is, is that we think we're free, but we're not. Because if we were, number one, they wouldn't be killing us like crazy. Number two, we would know our, we would know how to move in this country, but we don't. We got everybody on their own shit. But that's not how you move as a united front. How is it that everywhere you go, you got a little Tokyo, you got a little China, you got a little Italy, you got everything that every 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 other nation has their own like the Chinese come to the black neighborhoods to to, to start stores. You know, they don't go to white neighborhoods to start, you know, a hair store or, you know, to open up a, a, a corner store or to open up a Chinese restaurant. You know what I mean? Like, they put, they put food line in our neighborhoods. They don't put Whole Foods in our neighborhood. But then it's up to us to, to, to buy black because that's what pushes the narrative to make the dollar circulate. Because mm. if the dollar don't circulate, it don't stay. It don't stay. Like how, how do we run the culture? Literally, we 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 run the culture in America, but we don't own the culture. We don't own the culture, right? We don't create dividends from the culture. Mm. We get married, we don't create through suits. We don't create through dresses. We don't buy out the the, the hall that we get married in or the church. You know what I mean? So all the money goes goes back out. We don't own it. Now granted, now granted, the money's supposed to go back out. But it's not supposed to go out within a few hours. Right. You know I mean? So it's important. It's important. I appreciate important. it. So what, now we're gonna go. We're gonna transition to <laughs> the fight game. Yes, sir. When do you plan on fighting next? Because because I remember seeing you, and I know you have fought before. But then I started to see you started running. You were filming yourself running again, yeah. and then you you you, you invest you're investing yourself in the fight game again because you took some time off. Yeah. But now you're coming back. Well, uh, you know, when do you plan on fighting? I'm on, I'm on two ways right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to build this business up. Uh, that's hands up combat fitness that is. Uh, but I'm also trying to get back physically. Trying to get back. Uh, but it won't. It probably won't be until. Probably the end of next year. But when I come back, it won't be an MMA. I might take one MMA fight, but it'll be boxing, definitely. Oh, wow. Yeah, it'll definitely be boxing. Because I, I ain't no money in MMA. And That's I'm, facts. I'm trying to get paid. I'm, that, I'm trying to get paid. I'm trying, you heard what he said. He's trying to get paid. <laughs> hey, you got to get the social media up. I got to feed these kids. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Fatherhood, fatherhood. Yeah. Last question. How has fatherhood impacted you in the fight game, but also in life? Uh, it taught me that I had... Well, number one, it gave me a, uh, a sense of learning how to protect and defend. Because as men, you know, that's our job, first. First, especially if you got a family. Or if you live in a household with women in it, protect mm -hmm. and defend. Their job is to nurture and progeny. So, you know, it, 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 it taught me that I had to learn how to, number one, defend myself and learn how to defend them mm. you know so and then as far as the fight game man it, man, it gave me uh I, and i had the bad part about it is that I, I didn't i somewhat tapped into it the last fight but i didn't tap into it all the way like that savage shit, like and i'm learning especially after my fast I'm, I'm learning new levels of veracity Mm. Like, you got to be able to turn it on and turn it off. You know, mm -hmm. I heard a dude the other day. He was like, "How do you fight without being mad?" Like, mm. it's like, cause I fought mad before, like especially street fights. I fought mad before, and that leads to getting fucked up. Absolutely. Like, but when you can, it's called controlled chaos. When you can control the chaos, like that's when you, you learn how to win. Or you accept the way you lose. Hmm. Yes, sir. Where can the people find you on social media? Facebook, Instagram, where oh, can man. they find you? Uh, Instagram, infamous for number four, EVA MMA on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, Jeff Copeland. See this pretty face right here. Yes, uh, sir. Twitter, uh, I don't have a Twitter right now. So I probably need to make one. 
Um, yes, sir. But yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, uh, TikTok, uh, infamous eighty, infamous J, eighty eight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Thank you for your time, Jeff. I had a pleasure yes, listening sir. to you. This was fun. We got to do another one. Man. Yes, sir. Absolutely.